Welcome back to the channel. It's Ali Garced, your real estate agent in Tucson, Arizona and the surrounding areas. I am currently going on a walk right now to the mailbox with my wife who's running away from me. But <laughs> she started to scurry along real fast. <laughs> I have my notes with me. This video is going to cover more cons of moving to Tucson, Arizona, but stick to the end because I will list a pro that not a lot of people talk about. So with that said, let's begin. Let's go to my handy dandy notes. Number one, the environment and everyone i feel like everyone talks about the uh the climate and it was like oh my gosh it's so hot and like you have to really like love the sun which is definitely true uh but simply on a walk like this going a couple of steps to the mailbox and back by the time we get back Britt and i like discuss this often we feel like we have to wash our hands like even just going outside on like laying on a hammock for like 30 minutes you come back in i feel like i have to wash my hands i feel like there's so much dirt in this air which also would you agree that there's a lot of dirt our neighbor. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, I'm on camera, not you. <laughs> so I feel like any single time we just go on like a simple walk outside, get to come back. And I'm not a germaphobe, but with all that dirt in the air, I feel like that is what causes a lot of people to get allergies and asthma when they move here. So I already had allergies. <clears throat> I am uh, the weak species, as I say. But asthma, I developed asthma while being here. And um, so now I have to use an inhaler. I have like, what is it, mild, medium? Well, I don't know. Some sort of asthma. Definitely have to use an inhaler now every single time I do cardio, which kind of sucks. But it is what it is. And with my asthma, I mean, with my allergies, I have to get allergy shots. So again, I actually used to, and now I have them again every single Monday, get my allergy shots. That's also because I live with cats too. So that's what we do for love. The second con is about the restaurant service here. And I don't mean to be a Karen at all. Trust me, I was a server, so I know how hard the service industry is. My hat goes off to them. But in Tucson, I will say you definitely have to pack at least another 30 minutes, maybe up to an hour, just because the service is so slow in a lot of these like bigger type restaurants where you will see good service, fast service, where you don't have to go chasing a waitress down in order to get the bill just to leave like to pay to leave, I'll say you get much better service when you go to smaller type restaurants. And I will say those are like mom and pop owned, especially like the local like cuisines, pretty much I'm thinking like immigrant families. Those, they have some good service there. Third con is the homelessness. And I told you I'd be real with you. So if you appreciate my realness, I would appreciate a like. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. But the homelessness is real in Tucson. Uh, actually, the city of Tucson was sued recently for the amount of homelessness that we have, especially like the downtown area. Again, this is not coming from my personal opinion. This is city information. You can find this public information. So it's that much more important to know exactly what area you're getting into, what areas you want to avoid. Definitely go on crime maps like spotcrime.com. That way you can know exactly what the crime situation is like before you move to an area. And with that said, one of the most common occurrences when it comes to crime in Tucson or car theft. Man, car theft is everywhere left and right. Whether you live in a quote-unquote safe area or not safe area, car theft is real. So just because you are moving to a an area where you think there's less crime than others does not mean your car will not be stolen. Car theft is everywhere. So definitely use your garage to store your cars <laughs> as well as your valuables. Not a lot of people do it. Not a lot of people will store their cars in the garage because sometimes, like in my case, when I previously, before I moved to Gladden Farms, we had a lot of stuff in our garage. Worst case scenario, put an air tag in your car so at least like hidden somewhere in the car. So at least that way you can track your car down if slash when your car is stolen. All right, peeps. Sorry about that. I uh, introduced myself to the neighbor. Well, actually, Britt Brit did originally because she was looking. We have a an RV garage. And she was looking to see what type of ladder our neighbor had, who also has an RV garage in this neighborhood, Gladden Farms. But she was like, hey, what kind of ladder do you have? Because we need one too. There's a spider in the in like the corner and we can't get it. So right now we have a roommate, which is a spider. So anyway, I kind of um, mixed the the homelessness as well as the car breaks and the car break-ins together. That was supposed to be two different points. So that's points three and four. Now back to my handy dandy list here. Number five is outdoor activities. There aren't a lot of good free outdoor activities if you're not a hiker. Of course, if you like bicycling, that's one thing. Bicycling is like a really uh, big activity here in Tucson. A lot of people move here for the bicycling industry. Um, and of course, hiking is free. But if you want to play pickleball, tennis, I've said this in, in another video as well. It is not free. You usually have to pay like 
five to ten dollars an hour just to reserve a court like per person so it kind of sucks and it's not a lot but also like it's kind of a, kind of a lot especially when you feel when you figure that you have to drive um like 30 minutes usually just to get to like a pickleball center so kind of sucks also i feel like i make it myself sound very old I'm like oh, i'll play pickleball for free but whatever it is what it is it's all my knees can handle right now wait number seven very plain and simple. You cannot have a black car. People have black cars here, but it is just too freaking hot. And of course I have to mention the weather. Yeah, but like seriously, don't get a black car. Definitely don't have like, or if you do, you need that um, sun visor or whatever to block away the sun. You need a good quality brand of that because otherwise you're going to be very hot. It's very common where you will get into your car and if you, I have leather seats. I don't have cloth, so this might be uh, an area where cloth seats are better. But if you have leather seats, you will leave your car ride even after the ac is turned on even if you have ac seats you will leave your car and you'll see the prints from the sweat of your legs it's gross points number eight and nine i'm going to combine together there is only one highway which if you see my map video of tucson you've noticed that there's only one highway and it's all the way off to the west side which is very annoying with that said you want to make sure if you have friends here in tucson and you want to live near them ask them where they live and maybe plan accordingly because otherwise, you will not see your friends, dude. I have not seen one of my friends that live out in Vail because I'm just on the opposite side. It will take an hour and 30 minutes just to get there. So it is what it is. I mean, it, it, it sucks, you know? It's hard. It is a commitment to go. It's a day trip to go from one side of Tucson to the other, especially down to Sauerita, Vail area, even the Rita Ranch area, which is closer to Tucson than Vail is. Vail is like its own city outside but it's just such a trek so if relationships are important to you of course you can always make more friends but if you want to be near your very very close friends or family you want to make sure you're living near them point number 10 are the animals in tucson so like i mentioned before we have some spiders we have a lot of creepy crawlies we have scorpions so if you're to come at night um and use a black light do it at your own will right i've never done it i will not ever do it but a lot of people will have their black lights and they'll go out at night, especially if they live like on the outskirts of Tucson where there's more scorpions to be found. And you can just see how many scorpions there are in your in your own backyard, dude. That's I think it's scary. Uh, not my cup of tea. I would rather live in blissful ignorance there. But also along with scorpions are tarantulas, which are supposedly good to have in your neighborhood, um, or at least like around you. They kill off a lot of other bad things, whatever. Spiders and pack rats so if in case you've never heard of what a pack rat is they will eat the wires of your car this is why you'll see depending on how much you've driven around tucson or if you haven't yet i'll tell you that a lot of people leave their cars if they don't have a garage they'll leave their car hoods open and they'll have a light shining into their car so in that way the pack rats who don't like the light won't start eating the wires of their car. If you leave your car, say you have, you have a carport, it might be another reason to get a garage. I'm a big proponent of garages in case you cannot tell, but if you end up getting a carport, you are going to want to leave a light on outside all night, every single night. Make sure that the light does not go out because as soon as the light does go out, those pack rats are going to eat the wires of your car and destroy it. So I don't know why that's what they nibble on, but we definitely even see that on base as well where you can't just like turn a simple light on so you will have to leave your hood open just keep that in mind that can get pricey too along with the car insurance so cars all around can be pricier here con number 11 is frankly that tucson is just too big i have said this in multiple videos as well so check out those other videos but i seriously think that tucson should be divided just right down the middle like just like i don't know or slice it into a pizza man it is just too big i think it should be several different cities because it is it's just too far it's too big it's too much we continue growing wide we grow out instead of growing up i would pr rather prefer we grow up however we do have that um uh this will be a pro actually a pro of tucson is that it is partnered with the university of arizona related to astronomy right <laughs> the stars um so therefore we do not have a lot of city lights there are regulations against how many like street lights are uh, like we should even have because of the light pollution because uh, we have a lot of scientists that study the stars here so that program is awesome that's pro number one pro number two there are no mosquitoes can you beat that i don't know <laughs> you told me that's for you to decide 
What else will help you decide whether or not Tucson is even for you are the videos on the screen right now. Clicking on either of those videos will help you narrow down if you decide to move to Tucson, you know, if, if you even should move to Tucson, and if so, which area, because you do not want to move to the wrong area. That is exactly what I'm here for. If you would like to book a call directly on my Calendly, so that way you and I can meet, my team can meet over Zoom to start that process, that is the best way to start the process with us is book directly using the link or find out more about Tucson. I'll see you in the other video.